Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. It's been a minute. Uh, needless to say, I've been pretty busy lately, um, but I say we just hop right back into it. Today, we are talking about ATM, which um, is this cool move you can insert at the end of almost anything, and it looks like that. You guys have probably uh, seen it a bunch. It's pretty popular. Um, I am aware that there are a bunch of other tutorials on this out there, um, so feel free to check those out. I just want to make my own, just so I could add my own tips, uh, sort of my perspective, what helped me, uh, and whatnot. Yeah, and plus I just kind of felt like making a video. So, uh, you know the drill, grab yourselves a deck of cards, and let's hop into the tutorial. Okay, cool, so here's kind of what the move looks like again, you do that, and then you can flip cards and close it up like that. So I think I'm gonna start by focusing on this part here, where you shoot cards off, like just this move right here. Um, and then after that, um, I'll talk more about what to do with the left hand, and then what type of, I don't know, spinny thingy to do with the right hand. So. First off, you're going to grab the deck from opposite corners with your thumb and middle finger. Now you're going to grab the corners where there are no pips. Alright, so these two, um, assuming the deck's face down, you're going to grab these two corners here. So again, there shouldn't be pips. Again, that's if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you would grab the side with the pips. But for... Um, all of you right-handed people, myself included, you're gonna grab the side without pips, right? And your index finger is gonna go on the side here, just like that. Uh, similar to if you're doing like a uh, shake change or whatever it's called, same grip. And your index finger is going to curl under and flip it around. So you're kind of in this position here. So your fingers stay in the same place, you pick it up there, um, but you just spin it around, and your index finger is just kind of curled on the back, like that, and your fourth finger, sorry, stepping around my tripod, your fourth finger is on the bottom edge here. So it's this sort of claw grip, if you will, um, and your index finger is applying pressure, kind of beveling the deck forwards, and your fourth finger is pulling this edge down. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull down with your fourth finger and you're gonna split the top card from your middle finger there and then you're gonna keep pulling down with your fourth finger and the card should come off like that. So once again, uh, you pick it up and you flip it over into that grip right there and you're really just pulling down, like down that way with your fourth finger, that guy right there, go boop. And you do wanna make sure that you're splitting from the middle finger and not the thumb. I can't even do it. <laughs> but if you pull down like that, the card will go down in a wonky way. So make sure you're splitting from this. And then your thumb here is your final release point. So you pull down with your fourth finger and you kinda just let the card slip from your thumb and the card will flick outwards. Oops. There you go. And you can just try your best to catch them in your left hand. Why oh, is this so hard? Okay. And yeah, that's essentially it. Um, so you can just practice that bit there. Just flicking cards from that hand into this hand. It's sort of a pulling motion with your fourth finger, so you're pulling down. And then from here, you're pulling down and back. So if you watch my fourth finger from, maybe from the front here. Is that a weird angle? Yeah. If you pull back like that, I'm pulling back that way a little bit. So down and then back and then releasing with the thumb. Uh, yeah, the best way to learn this is just to try it out and you'll sort of get an idea, sort of get a feel for it. Um, 
In terms of doing the move by itself, I normally do it from swing, the swing cut. So I would stop right there with the packet I want and I would do that thing. So here's how you would do it uh, if you did it just by itself. So I normally just do swing cut until I have about that many cards. Um, yeah, you wanna do it with, that's like six cards. It's really up to you. I do it with fewer cards. I know Tobias Levin can do it with like a bunch, but I'm more comfortable with a smaller packet. So swing cut until you have a small packet and your index finger is gonna grab this side of the deck. I'll try to do this over shoulder-ish. Grab this side of the deck and push it into your palm. So this corner is gonna go behind your thumb from your perspective and your middle finger is gonna grab the corner. And from here, you're in the same position as if you would have just picked the card up. Here you just need to flick your index finger around the deck. So the main thing is just going from this position here, your swing cup position, placing your index finger there, and then grabbing the corners. Then once you're there, you can, I don't know, you can just flip your wrist around and try to make it look cool while you're getting into your position. Uh, yeah, wrist movement, I kind of go up like this, bring this up, push it in, flip it out all the way to your index finger is straight. And then when you bring it back, you should be in your uh, position ready to go there. And like that and pull it back again. It's kind of, well, it's like any other flourish. It won't look super smooth when you first start. Um, especially like the uh, spinny part, unless you have experience, expertise in that uh, type, that area of flourishing, then you'll be good. But uh, yeah, you, I mean, you don't even have to do this. You can do whatever you want. It also works well, like at the end of moves such as uh, phased, where you already are kind of in that position, like here, then you can just whoop, and then you can shoot cards into the other hand. Left hand wise, um, I do a, rev, a revolution cut, a rev cut. Tobias Levin, I think he does like a thumb cut or something, um, but I'm gonna just be honest, I can't do the thumb cut, so I'm stuck with doing the rev cut or doing this weird triple cut thingy. Uh, meaning it looks something like this and I land a card there and then there like that um, or just doing the Charlie a uh, personally speaking I think it looks pretty good like I'm fine with that uh, it would be cool to be able to do his weird like thing or do like a I think it's called like a judo flip or whatever with the left hand um, but anyways you can experiment with that. Um, I haven't figured out a way to land it with like the scissor cut yet. That's weird. Um, but yeah, left hand is sort of uh, really up to you. If you want to know what I do, I do the rough cut. Um, yeah, that's that. All right, so that is my rundown on ATM. Um, it's basically just this part right here is I think ATM. The rest of it's either just lead up or a combo move or something. I remember like initially when I learned it, I saw someone do uh, like Lego Love. I think, think it's Lego Love, did Lego Love and then went into ATM. Mm. Then went into ATM and I just assumed the whole thing was ATM. But uh, turns out no, that this move here is a different thing. So if you're looking for the name of that, that's Lego Love. I don't have a tutorial on it, um, but you can learn it uh, elsewhere on YouTube. Anyways, yeah, sorry. That is ATM. Uh, if you have any more questions about it, feel free to ask them in the comments. And as I said, there are plenty of other tutorials on it uh, out there. On a slightly different note, um, my lighting and like coloring might change a little bit just because I got a little 
I didn't get a diffuser. I got a trash bag and taped it to my window is what I did. But it's acting like a diffuser, so the light's a bit better. And I found my camera actually has a cinema grade, like log profile, which if you don't know what that is, it just means it makes it easier to color grade. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think of the new whole um, lighting, not, not a setup, but the whole new look sort of thing. Um, also, I'm sorry if I'm like lisping a little bit. I got like Invisalign and they said the lisp should go away in two weeks. It's been two weeks and there's still words I can't say right. So just ignore that. <laughs> and if you're wondering about it, uh, that's what it was. I did not gain a speech impediment over the break. But yeah, that's that. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, now is a great time to subscribe. Now is a great time to subscribe. Um, like the video if you liked the video. And stay tuned. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.